Hi, welcome back to Bounce Forward with me, Tip Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present. Holly DM'd me with a great question. Hey, Tiff, I've loved following your career and watching TXO grow. Thanks, Holly. I'm really interested in a career in health and fitness. Can you give me some tips to take it from a hobby and just loving the gym to an actual career? Oh, Holly, this this got me stumped because I I don't know. I don't know how I made it happen for myself, but all I know that it takes a great deal of passion to take it from a hobby to a career because just training yourself is one thing, but training other people, it can be a real grind and you've really got to love it and you've really got to make sure you're a people person. And for me, I did the one-on-one, I did the boot camps, and then I went into group fitness, which I super loved. And when I was doing group fitness and I did my Les Mills um, accreditation and I taught body pump and body combat, I realized I liked teaching big groups And that's kind of led me to being an online trainer where I'm teaching big groups all the time and on camera and doing presenting kind of stuff. And so my advice to you is to try everything in the fitness space because at first I was a bit scared of being on stage and taking a class, right? One-on-one, pretty safe. You're just with one person, have a laugh, have a chat. But then I was like, oh, get on stage and take a class. That freaked me out at first, but then I really loved it and it's become my main passion. So for you, try everything. And then once you find what you really love, specialize. So for me, I specialized in Taekwondo, obviously martial arts was my thing. I doubled down on that. I got my sports coaching accreditation. I got my six stand black belt, all of my qualifications within martial arts. And then Following on that, I was like, you know what? I really want to specialize with women because martial arts can be a male-dominated sport. I was mostly, you know what, in the beginning of my career training men, training boys, and I realized I was really all about women and empowering women and empowering women to try martial arts and to, you know, try and get women into martial arts and get confident and self-defense angle. And so I wanted to more specialize in women. And that's why currently I'm doing my pre and postnatal certification. And I'm so excited about that. It's everything to do with women's bodies and it's taking a while to complete, but I am so excited to try and get that. I really do hope I pass. And so, you know, it's, it's about specializing. I think so many people look at a career in health and fitness and they're just so general. They're like, well, I'm about weight loss and I'm a bit about kettlebells and I'm a bit about this. And, you know, you really do have to specialize to stand out from the crowd. And that's the reason clients are going to come to you as well. They're going to come to you because you're the person to teach them, you know, in, I don't know, any kind of hybrid training maybe they're interested in or whatever path you choose to go down. I I really do think it's an exciting time for you, Holly, but I think you need to take some time out to really try a few things and see what you really, really love because some people get on stage to do group fitness and they just die and that's not for them. Some people do one-on-one and find the grind of a new client showing up on the hour, every hour, every half hour to just be a bit much and a long day and just too hard to do the programming and too much prep. But, you know, others love love the prep and um, programming. So it, it just depends. It depends on you. But if you ever need any advice, I'm here. So reach out, Holly, and good luck with it. A really crucial part of my journey has been going to different facilities, different gyms, and experiencing different trainers. And this has just been such a mentoring, important mentoring experience for me. And I would urge you, Holly, to go and find a trainer mentor. So for me, I was in commercial gyms all the time teaching Les Mills. 
and if a trainer couldn't make a class, I was a person that would fill in. So I was a fill-in trainer and I, that would take me to all kinds of gyms and I would get to see all kinds of trainers performing, training people. Then I've lived in different cities. So I've lived in Brisbane. I've lived in Sydney for work. I also made sure that I went to a lot of different gyms in that time and witnessed other trainers training. And that was, I learned so much from that. My time on Biggest Loser was so exciting because I got to work so closely with Michelle Bridges, Shannon Ponton, Steve Willis, Commando, and you know, learn from them, their training styles. They're phenomenal. And that was a real mentoring time in my career. And then also when I was the director of training for Chris Hemsworth Center app, I was working with something like 13 to 15 other elite trainers who were global and from all corners of the world. And I got to learn so much from them, from boxing to yoga to strength training to bodybuilding to gymnastics. And I picked up all these little things along the way. So mentoring is really important. And I have some mentors that I still see today. Tash Jack is one of my mentors. She is a pre and postnatal trainer, which really inspired me to get my qualification. Um, we've trained together for many, many years as she's she's been my trainer. Every coach needs a coach, right? And she's trained me. I've watched her train other people and I still go to her for advice. Um, she's my right-hand woman and I, I just really protect that relationship, which is great. Um, I've also got other mentors in the martial arts space through my parents' martial arts schools. You know, Luke Atkins, he's a prolific martial artist. And also I turn to my parents who are fitness instructors and martial arts instructors as well for advice. So I feel like like the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And you really do need to go searching for those mentors and experts to shadow. And I really loved doing a lot of time in gyms where I just would ask a really great trainer, hey, can I shadow you for a couple of sessions or a couple of weeks? And they'd be like, yeah, sure. I've got clients on Tuesday come in at nine and spend a few hours. And I would just watch them literally stand there and watch them train someone and you just pick up so much by shadowing. So that's a really good tip. And I'd also really urge you to go into different environments. So, you know, go do a class at a boutique gym, go do a class at a tiny personal trainer studio where they just do one-on-ones, go and try a commercial gym spin class, you know, Go into different environments and and see what suits you best. The big, pumping, loud music of a commercial gym, that might be you. That might be your jam. Or you might go, oh, my God, I can't think of anything worse than this and I'm, I'm just going to go boutique. Like it, it's – it's I, I've trained at all kinds of recovery centers and athlete centers and all kinds of places and really found that, oh, I don't really like any of them. I'm going to go online <laughs> and I'm going to hide. And I just love being online. And I love that experience of how people can talk to me and I can be so available to people. And it's so much easier online than just having one person at a time. I find that's my love of the community. I really love that aspect of online, but I didn't know that. And I didn't know that for so many years, not until like 2017. And I'd been PTing and doing my thing for like, you know, almost 10 years at that point. So yeah, definitely get out there, find a mentor, do some shadowing and experience different fitness environments. So Holly, to start training in the industry, taking your hobby of loving the gym to an actual career, you're going to need to get your Cert 3, Cert 4 in fitness, which is pretty easy <laughs> to do. You can do it online or you can – but I look, here's my advice. I wouldn't – there's courses all over the world, Cert 3, Cert 4 qualifications, and some you can just get in a weekend. But I wouldn't do that. I would go through a reputable body – in Australia and one that takes a little while to get and has a practical requirement that makes you go into a gym and shadow someone and 
do some prac. Like, because it can be very theoretical. You can get it pretty easily and without even training people, which is just crazy. So go to your favorite gym, say, hey, I'm doing my Cert 3, Cert 4. Can I shadow? Can I be mentored? Can you help me through this process of getting my Cert 3, Cert 4? And um, it, it'll just be so much more rewarding and put you on the front foot in entering the industry. Thanks so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I absolutely love having your company. So please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know all the questions you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app. Speak soon. Happy days.